Welcome everyone to this service for Tuesday of Holy Week, especially people from our fellow churches in Pennycook. We're glad you can join us this evening. Let's pause for a moment and be quiet as we come to worship God. Please join with me in our call to worship, words from Psalm 71, which will be on the screen. Lord, be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Let's sing together, if you know it, Faithful One, So Unchanging. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you alone are our refuge, our place of safety, and we are trusting you to keep us in the faith of Christ. Your faithful promises are our armor. Be our strong rock, our fortress, to keep us safe from all the devices of the enemy which come to upset or distract us from following and serving him who died for us, Jesus, our Lord. Let your word come afresh to us tonight with all the assurance that your spirit gives. Let your good news speak to the depths of our hearts and reveal again to us your power and wisdom and your great love for us and for the whole world through Jesus Christ crucified. Amen. And now Kathleen Hill is going to come uh, and read us our first lesson from 1 Corinthians. A reading from St. Paul to the Corinthians. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The Gospel is written in the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning at the 20th verse. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip, he was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain, unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Those who love their life will lose it. Those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me, so that my servant will be with me where I am. And my Father will honour anyone who serves me. Now my heart is troubled. And what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me? 
but that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven. I have brought glory to it, and I will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said it was thunder, while others said an angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, It was not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In saying this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. The Apostle Paul says that the, the message, the Christian message of Jesus' death on the cross burst on a largely incredulous ancient world. To Jewish people, it made no sense. Paul was proclaiming an executed Messiah. That surely meant this Messiah was a failure, like all the other possible claimants to the title. It was contrary to all that they'd been taught. The Messiah would be authenticated by God by miraculous signs and triumph victoriously over all their oppressors and put Israel back in their God-given place. Jesus' own disciples originally didn't understand, even when, as Mark says, Jesus said things plainly. Now, this fellow Paul was going around preaching that the Christ had won victory, not even over the cross, but through, but by means of the cross, by means of the most horrible death, the most degrading punishment that the rulers of the ancient world could devise. God had opened the way for us to be made right by Christ. Unworthy as we are of that great privilege of being adopted by God into the Christian family, God has bought us at a price and freed us. If Jews find this offensive, Greek and Roman sensibilities were also offended by the Christian teaching about the cross. Greeks look for wisdom, says Paul, and their inquiry into the nature of things is truly remarkable. We often still go to Greek thinkers for their insights into the world. But they made certain assumptions as well. One of these assumptions was that to come closer to the divine, to come closer to God or the gods, we had to ascend. The lower had to rise to the higher. This also matched their ideas of social status. Those with higher status did not come down to the level of those below. Of course, they had lots of stories about the gods in disguised form mingling around humans but it was largely for their own reasons. That's the gods. And it wasn't because the gods actually cared for us. For Plato, the divine world and the human world were separate categories that couldn't overlap. St. Augustine of Hippo was schooled in Plato's thought world. This was before he was converted to Christ. And he writes off the things that he learned from the Platonists. He says, but that the word was made flesh and lived among us 
I read not there. I've been reading a book by two authors called Wilburn and Gregor. It's called The Cross Before Me. It's about reimagining the way to the good life. And I suppose I'm recommending it to you, although I haven't finished it yet. And in it, they say this. The Christians told a story in which God became human out of love for human beings to save them. This kind of downward mobility was unimaginable to the ancients. God came down into the squalor of our world to rescue us and raise us up. God became a nobody in Jesus, dying the lowest death imaginable, and even to do that for the lowest of human beings. This is the upside down story that our reading from John chapter 12 also tells. Some Greeks want to see Jesus. They've come to Jerusalem for the Passover. Not as Jews, but as interested non-Jewish worshippers. I think there's no hint in the language of anything else or any other status that they have. They are outsiders who want to know more. And from a Jewish perspective, They're suspicious, unclean outsiders who are allowed to come a certain way into the temple, but no further. And Jesus sees in them a sign of the impact that he will have on outsiders, even as those on the inside, the religious leaders, are showing every sign of rejecting him. For despite Paul's description of the incredulity of both the Jew and the non-Jew, Paul still says, to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Jesus says, When I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. And John tells us this is the way that Jesus is going to die, on a Roman gibbet, on a cross. But it will have an attractive drawing power. We might add because of the Holy Spirit's work in human beings. If the grain falls into the ground and dies, Jesus says, it won't remain alone. The gospel will bear fruit. But what is true of Jesus is also true of us. We must be willing to give up our small ambitions and to die to our way of doing things, the way that the world thinks is right. For those who love who their own life will lose it. And those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Jesus is here making a standard opposition. The values of this world, of what constitutes a good and successful life, must be set aside by followers of Jesus in order to follow him. Instead of appearing in imagined power and glory, God's nature was revealed in Jesus, God's loving nature, in humility and weakness. And the true glory, John is telling us, shines all the brighter because of that. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. 
as Christians, our task is carrying on with Jesus' mission in the same humble spirit of dependence on Jesus. For whoever wants to serve me, Jesus says, must follow me. And my Father will honor anyone who serves me. Amen. Now I'm going to suggest for the next hymn that you just keep seated and reflect. You can sing along if you know it. I doubt that many of you do. And it's called, O Christ, I Kneel Before Your Cross. Let's pray again. Lord Jesus, you taught your disciples that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. As we prepare our hearts to remember your death and resurrection, grant us the grace and the true wisdom to serve and to follow you in the way that Jesus did this day and always. And Father, help us to know what it means for us individually to take up our cross and follow you, to be true followers of Jesus and depending on him day by day. And now if you would like to Please join with me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. They're going to come up on the screen, but please feel free to join with them in the words which you are used to. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn is, I Cannot Tell. And even if you don't know the hymn, you should know the tune, because it goes to, O oh, Danny Boy. Just a reminder before you go that our next service is at the Sacred Heart Church on Wednesday. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you all through Holy Week and beyond. Amen. <laughs>